Good morning. It is Thursday. How's it going? Welcome to CBS News Minnesota Morning Update. I'm Jason DeRussia. Lots going on in the news today for sure. It is a very cold start to the day as well. We're sort of used to that, right? It's five below right now at 730 here in the CBS News Minnesota Morning Update. Look at the warm up though. Oh, baby, it's going to be beautiful. Not really. It's not really going to be beautiful. It's, uh, it's going to feel like one or two and then it's going to snow. Why not? How about an inch or two of snow? Fabulous. Uh, not a ton of snow, but if you have plans to go anywhere tonight, um, I want to think about it. You know, you can handle an inch, but on top of rush hour, uh, the timing might not be great. So we'll be keeping an eye on the snow and, of course, keep you updated here on, on the old streamer, CBS News Minnesota. Lots of heavy news. You've probably been following it on social media, right? Lots of updates about Ukraine, which is heartbreaking. It's a heartbreaking situation. So we wanted to take a moment anyway and give you something else to think about. Chili. It's National Chili Day. We can think about more than one thing, right? We can focus on the good and the warmth and the comfort from a nice bowl of chili. I want your secret ingredient. That's what we're asking today to celebrate National Chili Day. I love chili. I like, I like uh, chicken chili. I like a green chili, a white chili, a red chili, beans, yes. I say yes, you may say no. Do you go ground beef? Do you go uh, brisket maybe? Oh yeah, brisket chili is good. What kind of spice? Turkey, how about turkey chili? How about tofurkey chili? How about tofu chili? No. If you say tofu chili, we will kick you off of this page. You'll be done, banned from the morning update. But let us know your secret ingredient. If you have a recipe, want to link that in there, that's cool so everybody can click on it. But otherwise, your secret ingredient. Let's bring you up to date on Ukraine. Developments are coming in quickly. We're learning more and more and more as this invasion of Ukraine now underway. Uh, the Ukraine saying at least 40 people killed in the initial invasion and attacks from Russia. We saw explosions all over the country in the overnight hours. President Biden condemned the attacks as unprovoked and unjustified, warned of severe consequences. Uh, leaders from around the world are calling on Russia to knock it off and stand down. But President Vladimir Putin is threatening himself, saying, look, any other country that tries to interfere will have, in the translation of what he said, here's what he said, you'll have consequences you have never seen. Tough talk from Putin. And right now this video is, uh, well, it's just, it's, it's stark. The people in Ukraine, this is in Kyiv, trying to escape. Massive traffic jams as people try to get the heck out of there and try to save their families. A uh, very, very tough situation. One of several cities where we heard those explosions overnight. Lots of coverage on the CBS News streaming service as well. As expected, this invasion by Russia is rattling Wall Street. Uh, in the overnight hours, the futures, Dow futures, plunged down more than 800 points. Just an indication things are probably going to go haywire today. Oil prices are jumping while the markets are dropping. Oil prices up almost 8% overnight causing the price of a barrel to climb over $100. Oil price is always strange to follow because here in Minnesota, in the, uh, we get most of our oil. Well, e even the U.S. is getting most of the oil domestically now, but it's a global product. And so when you have 15% of the world's supply disrupted, potentially because of this invasion, it does have ripple effects on everybody's pricing. So lots to watch for. Gas price is probably going to jump today as well. So think about maybe gassing up if you see if now's not a bad time to do it. Let's talk about the teacher strike because it is coming, say, uh, so says uh, the unions for Minneapolis and St. Paul. They put a date on the calendar when they plan to strike. Okay, it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to happen, but let's be honest, the gulf here between the two sides, hard to see where they come together on this. March 8th, the earliest tentative date for the teacher strike in both districts. If you've got kids in the Minneapolis or St. Paul Public Schools, mark your calendar, circle it, and start to think about what you're going to do. Now, there could be a deal reached, right? Teachers are fighting for smaller class sizes, more mental health resources, but ultimately they're saying we want to be paid more, and they're asking for a lot more. And whether they deserve it, well, of course they deserve it, right? 
The question is, can the districts afford it? That is where some of the debate is coming in, and both the districts and the school uh, teachers are basically blaming the legislature, which that makes this way more complicated, right? Everyone's saying, well, you need to give more funding to the schools. Woof. All right, so that, uh, you know, solve that in eight or nine days? We'll see. At the state capitol today, this issue, boy, you thought that this was going to be an easy one, right? During COVID, you've got health care workers, nursing home workers on the front line risking their lives. But giving a bonus to these workers has proven to be very complicated. The DFL wants to give more than 660,000 workers a bonus. And I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of people. But if you're honoring frontline workers, how do you not include grocery store workers or postal service workers or warehouse workers? There are a lot of frontline workers, right, who still had to go to work. 1500 bucks is the number. But the Republicans and the Senate are saying, come on. Like, this really should be for health care workers, nursing home workers, and they want to give more money, fewer people. They haven't been able to agree on this in a year. In a year. If you think that's going to get done this week, think again. Snow emergencies in place around the metro. Uh, hundreds of people getting a nice little free ride. Well, it's not really free. The ride there is free. The ride home costs you to the impound lot. Uh, let's listen to this young man. I uh, kind of had a late night, and I swear when I was out, I saw my car getting towed around 12 o'clock last night, but I didn't want to believe it. You know, this happens. You kind of have a late night. You see stuff. You're like, I don't know. Did I see it? Was that my car? Did I maybe have too much studying or whatever Elias Brown was doing with his late night. Uh, no, Elias was towed. He tells us it's the second time he was towed. Um, but maybe by the third time, he'll get the snow emergency rules down. It's a little tricky. Sometimes you just don't know. We built a website for you, Elias. Go to WCCO.com slash snow emergency. If you're watching this, we did it for you. We don't want, I don't know how much it got. It's like 250, 300 bucks, isn't it? Oof. Man, no good. So... Getting towed, not, not fun. Towing cars, though, so they can move the plows through, so they can clear the roads. We like that, because the side streets are terrible. All right, Target. I don't, should we be thrilled by this or horrified at how lazy we've become as a society? During the pandemic, one of the greatest things is that people were able to put time back in their life by doing drive up purchases, right? You can order online. Someone brings it out to you. It's way quicker. You have more time to spend with your family or do whatever. Target is saying customers said, look, we love being able to buy stuff, but wouldn't it be nice if I could pull up to one of these drive up spots and return stuff? And Target said, you know what? That's a good idea. So they built it. It'll be set in the fall. And then another thing, when you sit out there, I'll confess, like there have been times that I've picked up my order sitting out there and think, man, that Starbucks is right inside the store. I sure would be nice if they bring me out a cup of coffee. And now they're going to do that. So th that was my positive. That was positive Jason doing this story. 4.30 this morning, you got to hear negative Jason doing this story. Where it's like, what is wrong with people? Like, seriously, you can't just go to the customer service desk? Is it that hard? Like, how many things are we returning? We're like, we really, I can't. I cannot get out of this car. Gotta have someone bring you a coffee. I don't know. I like getting out of the car. It's fine. Gotta stretch these legs. Uh, this story I find fascinating. A Twin Cities fire camp. Some, sometimes real innovation comes from people who are on the front lines, who are dealing with stuff, who are trying to solve a problem. They see a problem that maybe other people don't see. This can be inspiration for all of us in our lives and in our workplaces, right? So this St. Paul firefighter has come up with a great idea. Uh, and CBS has been doing some incredible reporting about kind of the gear that firefighters wear. We know that firefighters see higher rates of cancer. And it makes sense, right? Like you're surrounded by smoke, you're in all these bad situations. Uh, the firefighter gear has, you know, there's like this hood on uh, their gear. 
that protects the head and neck from like smoke and carcinogen exposure. But there are other areas that this stuff can enter your body, including the underarms and the groin area. And how do you protect that? Well, St. Paul firefighter came up with undergarments with protective fibers. Like the SCBAs protect our airway from us breathing in those carcinogens. My clothing line protects those carcinogens from ever reaching our skin and being absorbed into our skin. Pretty smart, right? Captain Monson selling this product on a website called Under Guardian. That's the name of his product. Uh, he says the biggest issue is that it's expensive. It uh, costs about $240 for a set of gear. Um, but, you know, think about it. If more people order it, it's going to bring the price down, you hope. And you're saving lives. Pretty brilliant. And so whether he ends up doing it or selling his technology to somebody else to have them make it, love it. Very, very smart. Uh, Eagle Cam. Eagle Cam in effect. There's another egg. Red alert. Maybe you need a break today. Maybe you need to not doom scroll all day on social media. Go watch the egg. Watch the eagles. Now, I don't know where this information came from, but we're told a third egg could be on the way. And one eagle was sitting there, and then another eagle came in, and then let's just say there was some stuff going on that makes you proud to be an American. So maybe that's why we know a 30 egg is on the way. Soak that in, everybody. All right, let's talk chili since we're getting spicy. Uh, we're asking what your secret ingredient is. And uh, we're having some problems with our little graphic thing that usually shows uh, the comments, so I'm just going to read a little bit. Appreciate Wellspring. We appreciate, what a cool name. Appreciate. Bacon and maple syrup. Shh, don't give away my secrets. <laughs> I like that. Oh, a little bacon sounds good. Maggie Mae beans and spice is what Maggie Mae puts in. Mainly beans. I'm pro beans. Suzanne Baldwin. Uh, 80 20 ground beef is what she used. Hot sausage. Ooh, hot sausage. The best chili base ingredient. That's cool. Melody Evans goes all in on the meat. I've never had a multi meat chili. She goes burger, turkey burger, and pork. Interesting. I might try that. Generally, more meat the better, I say. Load it up. Kimberly Zeppelin. I do like a turkey chili, though, to be honest. The meat doesn't really, it doesn't hugely matter. It's more about like the tomato and the beans and the spice for me. Uh, Kimberly Zeppelin, lemon juice and paprika. I, the lemon juice, that's a very good idea. I bet the acidity helps cut some of the, the fat that you get in chili. That's, that's pretty good. Doesn't look good. Dick. It's five below. I just want to, it reminds me of like the, the uh, what's the beans? Roll that beautiful bean footage. It's like, it's Bush's beans. It's that commercial. I just want to roll that beautiful chili footage. Now my stomach's growling. All right. That's it. CBS Minnesota Morning Update. The weirdest local news update in probably the country. Do you think this is the weirdest in the country? Who else breaks down filthy eagle love like I do? Nobody. Nobody does it like this. Uh, and thank goodness nobody does it like this. We'll see you again tomorrow, 730.